So, good day, mom and classmates. We are the group 7 and we will be discussing the sections under Republic Act number 9523. But before that, I would like to introduce the reporters. Which, reporter 1, yours truly, from the title and to section 3. And then, reporter reporter 2 would be Miss Dakalen, Jessa May, section 4 and 5. Reporter number 3 would be Miss Dalaw, Angel Valerie, uh, section 7 and 8 and reporter number 4 would be Mr. David Mycroft LB of section 9 to 10. So let's proceed from the title. So the title of Republic Act number 9523 which an act requiring the certification of the Department of Social Welfare and Development or the so-called DSWD to declare a child legally available for adaptation. As a prerequisite for adaptation proceedings, amending for this proposed certain provisions of Republic Act No. 8552 or otherwise known as the Domestic Adaptation Act of 1998, Republic Act No. 8043 or otherwise known as the Inter-Country Adaptation Act of 1985, um, Presidential Decree No. 603, otherwise known as the Child and the Youth Welfare Code and for other purposes. So, from the title itself, an act requiring the DSW the certification declaring a child um, legally available for adaptation or yung tinatawag nating CDCLAA. So, ito ay ipinasa noong year 2009 at ito ay batas na nagtatakda ng certificate or certification for the declaration of child legally available for adaptation mula sa agency na DSWD o mas kilala sa tawag na CDCLA ay yung sinasabi ko kanina. So, this certificate um, this certificate um, prerequisite or kailangan bago magsimula ang petition or proseso ng pagpapaampon sa isang bata. So, let's proceed to section 2 which revolves around the definition of terms as used in the Act. So, number 1, we have the Department of Social Welfare and Development or the so-called DSWD. So, this agency is charged or responsible for the implementations of the provision of this act and shall have the sole authority to issue the certification declaring a child legally available for adaptation. So, ang, ang DSWD ang yung nag issue or nag proseso doon sa certificate ng isang bata para matawag or ma, yes, matawag siya na um, legal available for adaptation. And then, number two, um, child. So, as we have discussed um, the child in our previous discussions with Miss Aini, um, child refers to a person below 18 years of age or a person over 18 years of age but is unable to fully take care of themselves or protect themselves from abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitations, or discriminations um, because of physical or mental disab disability or condition. So, ito yung mga bata, pag sinabi natin nga, able to fully take care of themselves, is ito yung mga um, over 18 na hindi kayang ipagtanggol yung mga sarili nila because of their disability. So, next is the number 3, or ito yung tinatawag nilang abandoned child. So, sino nga ba yung mga matatawag na abandoned child? So, this refers to a child who has no proper parental care or guardianship or whose parents have deserted him or her for a period of at least three um, continuous months which includes a fundling. So, ibig sabihin, um, ito yung mga batang iniwan ng kanilang mga magulang na wala man lang maayos na pangangalaga sa loob ng um, tatlong buwan or higit pa. So, I would like also to add the foundling child. So, ano, sino yung mga tinatawag nilang foundling child? So, ito naman yung mga batang hindi alam yung um, facts of birth tulad ng dates, kung kailan sila ipinanganak, 
kung saan sila ipinanganak and also the informations about their parents and also the surrendered child. So, ito yung mga batang um, voluntaryong isinuko ng kanilang manggulang or their parents voluntarily surrendered their responsibility to the DSWD for the care of their children. So, here also in surrendered child, kinakailangan ng mga magulang ng bata ang pagpirma sa deeds of voluntary commitment o yung kasulatan na voluntaryong pagkakaloob doon sa agency. So, let's move on to number 4 which is the neglected child which refers to a child whose basic needs have been deliberately unattended or inadequately attended within a period of 3 continuous months. And also, neglect may occur in two ways. So, under the letter A, there is a physical neglect when the child is malnourished or yung tinatawag na sa kitten, ill-clad, which is yung parang sira-sira yung mga damit nila. And then, without proper shelter, walang maayos na tahanan. So, a child is unattended when left by himself or herself without the proper provision and or without proper supervision. And then under letter B, um, there is emotional neglect when the child is maltreated or yung abused, yung mali yung pagtatrato doon sa bata, rape, um, seduced, exploited, overwork, or yung masyado nilang pinagtatrabaho yung bata, which is not good for his or her health and also or is made to beg in the street or public places or when children are in moral danger so exposed to gambling, prostitutions and other vices so kung nandoon ka sa isang environment or yung bata is nandoon sa isang environment which is maraming maraming um, gambling na nakokomit prostitutions, doon sila natututong magkaroon ng vices or yung mga delinquent behavior. So next is number 5 which is the child legally available for adaptation which refers to a child in whose favor a certification was issued by the DSWD that he or she is legally available for adaptation after the facts of abandonment or neglect has been proven through the submission of pertinent documents or one who, ha who was voluntarily committed by his or her parents or legal guardian. So, bago natin matatawag that a child is legally available for adaptation is dumadaan muna siya sa ilang proseso. So, ito ay nagsisimula sa pag-submit ng petitioners or ng mga applicants ng kanilang petition or applications doon sa office ng DSWD. So, sino ba yung mga maaring mag-file ng petition or applications para sa mga pag-issue ng CDCLAA? Ng CDCLAA. So, number one is the head of Social Welfare and Development Office. Second is the head of Residential Care Facilities na minamanage ng DSWD o ng local government and also the head or the executive director of the DSWD Registered and Licensed Child Caring Agencies or the CCA, CCA. So, meron din doon sa tulong ng social workers um, ito yung tumutulong sa DSWD sa pagpapatunay na ang bata is now available for adaptation. So, ano nga ba yung mga ginagawa ng social workers in relation to the declaration of a child legally available for adaptation. So, sila yung humahawak ng kaso doon sa mga abandoned, neglect, neglected, or foundling children upang matukoy, mahanap, or makausap ang mga magulang at kamag-anak ng mga batang ito. So, ilan lamang sa mga ginagawa ng social workers is yung pagpapablatter ng kaso doon sa mga barangay or himpilan ng polisya na nakakasakop sa lugar kung saan um, inabado na o natagpuan ang mga bata. And then, number two, yung pananawagan sa mga magulang o pamag-anak ng bata sa pamamagitan ng broadcast material. 
yung radyo, television, or doon sa mga dyaryo. And then number three is yung pagpunta or interview or pagpapadala ng liham sa huling alam na tirahan ng mga magulang o kamag-anak ng bata at marami pang iba. At kung sa kabila ng mga efforts or yung ginawa nila like yung pagpapablatter, pananawagan doon sa mga broadcast materials or yung sa pagpunto or pag-interview sa iba't ibang lugar is hindi pa rin nahanap or nagpakida yung mga magulang ng or kamag-anak ng isang bata is ma maaaring magpatuloy na sila or magpasya yung mga agency or yung DSWD DSWD na ipetisyon na ang bata para uh, ma-declare or ma-declarang legal available na siya for adaptation. And then in number 6 which is the voluntarily committed child is one whose parents or legal guardian knowingly and willingly relinquished parental authority to the DSWD or any duly accredited child placement or child caring agency or institution. So, kagaya nga nung sinabi ko kanina, na surrendered child. So, they are, they are surrendering their responsibility to the DSWD through um, an agreement or yung kasuratan which is um, they are voluntarily or willingly na binibigay yung responsibilidad nila as a parents to the DSWD. And then number seven is child caring agency or institution refers to a private, non-profit, or government agency duly accredited by the DSWD that provides 24-hour residential care services for abandoned, neglected, or voluntarily committed children. So, sila yung nag-aalaga uh, doon sa mga bata 24 hours residential care services, sabi niya dito. And then, Number eight is child placing agency or institution refers to a private non-profit institution or government agency duly accredited by the DSWD that uh, receives and processes applicants to become foster or adoptive parents and facility, facilitate placement of children eligible for foster care of adaptation. And then number nine, petitioners refers to the head or executive director of a licensed or accredited child caring or child placing agency or institution managed by the government, local government unit, non-governmental organization, or provincial city or municipal social welfare development officers who has actual custody of the minor and who files a certification to declare such child legally available for adaptation or if the child is under the custody of any other individual, the agency or institution does so with the consent of the child custodian. So, in number 10, the secretary refers to the secretary of the DSWD or his duly authorized representative. So, siya yung nagsasign doon sa mga documents and he is a, the, the secretary is administratively declaring the child legally available for adaptation. Then in number 11, which is the conspicuous place, which shall refer to a place um, frequented by the public whereby the notice of the petition shall be posted for information of any interested person. And then in number 12, the Social Case Study Report or the SCSR. Um, this referred to a written report of the result of an assessment conducted by a licensed social worker as to the socio-cultural economic condition, psychosocial backgrounds, current functioning and facts of abandonment or neglect of the child. And the report shall also state the effort of social worker to locate the child's biological parents or relatives. Kagaya nga nung sinasabi ko kanina na yung mga social worker or um, yung mga social worker ang humahawak doon sa kaso ng isang abandoned or foundling children. Kaya dapat lahat ng mga nagather nilang informations or mga datas about the backgrounds of the children is ilalagay doon sa social case study report. 
kaya yung pagpapablatter, yung mga pananawagan nila doon sa radio, any broadcast materials, or doon sa mga in, um, interviews nila. And then, in section 3, um, the petition, which shall be in the form of an affidavit, sub subscribed and sworn to before any person authorized by law, the administer's oath. So, it shall contain the facts necessary to establish the merits of the petition and shall state the circumstances surrounding the ab abandonment or neglect of the child. So, um, it shall refer to the duly notarized application for the issuance of the certification to declare a child legally available for adaptation containing the facts and circumstances necessary to establish the abandonment, uh, neglect, or dependence of a child. So, the petition shall be supported by the following documents. Number one is the social case study report made by the DSWD, Local Government Unit, Licensed or Accredited Child Caring or Child Placing Agency, or institution charged with the custody of the child. And then number two is the proof that efforts were made to locate the parents or any known um, relatives of the children and the following shall be considered sufficient which is the written certification from a local or national radio or television station that the case was aired on three different occasions gaya nga yung pagpapablatter, pananawagan doon sa um, broadcast station and then um, publication Letter B is publication in one newspaper or general circulation. And letter C, police report or barangay certification from the locality where the child was found or a certified copy of a tracing report issued by the Philippine National Red Cross or the PNRC, National Headquarters so Social Services Division, which states that despite due diligence, the child's parents could not be found, and also the returned registered mail to the last known address of the parents or known relatives, if any. And the number three is yung birth certificate, if available, and also the recent photograph of the child and photograph of the child upon abandonment or admission to the agency or institution. So, ito yung mga required doon sa petition of the declaration of um, declaration availability of the availability of the adaptation of a child. Let's proceed to the section 4 which to be discussed by the reporter number 2, Ms. Dakalen Jessa.